Hi, welcome to Stats.Fun, I'm Matt Hansen. Have you ever seen other people present their research and later find that the results or conclusions were wrong? Well, hopefully that wasn't you, but it does happen more often than we like to admit. Well, why is that? I think a primary reason is because the original research that was collected wasn't fully validated, and that's a critical aspect of the measure phase that was probably neglected. So, in this lesson, we'll talk about why the measure phase is often neglected. I'll review some of the content from the lesson on risk analysis, so it may help to go through that lesson first. So let's begin by looking again at where the measure phase fits into the overall process for resolving a problem. Well, if you recall, what we're doing is we're following the DMAIC methodology, where we're trying to solve a problem. Well, it's critical that while we're solving that problem, that we gather reliable information. So as we started before on the define phase, that's where we said we had to have a clear understanding of the problem's severity and scope. Now that we moved on to the measure phase, what we need to do is gather reliable information that we can really trust all related to that problem. The analysis improvements that we'll eventually get to are only going to be as good as the data that we're collecting now within this measure phase. That's why I believe that the measure phase is probably the most critical and yet the most neglected phase through the whole DMAIC methodology. So let's just do a quick review like we've talked about before where we have the five basic steps we might follow in trying to resolve a problem. And we talked before how we can relate that to the five different phases of the Six Sigma methodology of DMAIC. Well, what I would like to point out is that in the measure phase here, we're saying that this is so essential. And why is it so essential? Well, what if we've got the wrong data? What if we have information that we really can't trust and it's no longer reliable? How do you think that might affect the analysis for when we're trying to find the root cause? And how it might affect eventually the improvements that we're trying to implement to fix the root cause? Or eventually the controls to sustain those improvements? All of that is going to crumble if we don't start off with having the right reliable information that we're trying to collect now within the measure phase. So now let's explore why the measure phase is so often neglected. Well, in order to answer this, what I'd like to do is review first the example that we had where we were counting red jelly beans in the jar, and it was in the lesson where we talked about risk analysis. And we'll use that as a basis for trying to answer this question of why the measure phase is so often neglected. So if you recall from that example, we asked, how many red jelly beans are there in a jar, a large jar of jelly beans? Well, we said that there were two different methods you could follow. For the first method, you can empty out all the jelly beans and count them all one by one for just the red ones. The advantage of doing that is you're going to have a much more accurate answer. However, the disadvantage is it was going to take a lot more time to count them. And we said the second method is that you can count the red ones in a small sample and then multiply that out by the total volume of the jar. Well, the advantage of doing that method is it's going to take a lot less time, but the disadvantage was that it was going to be a lot less accurate or has the potential of being less accurate compared to the first method. So we asked which method of counting the jelly beans was the best. Well, it, it really doesn't come down to one being better than the other necessarily because they're both equally valid methods for counting red jelly beans. But what does make one method better than the other is depending on how the risk or rewards are balanced between the two. We said that risk is determined by the disadvantages for each method. So for the first method where we said that the disadvantage was it was going to take a lot more time, then the question we might ask ourselves for the first method is, is the reward worth the risk of taking more time to use this method? So if the reward was something like a million dollars, like we use in our example, then perhaps the risk of more time is really worth ensuring that we're more accurate in our answer. But for the second method, where we said the disadvantage was it was going to be a lot less accurate, we asked the question, is the reward worth the risk of being less accurate to use that particular method? Well, if the example was a reward of only a t-shirt or something of very low value, then perhaps the risk of being less accurate is worth taking less time. So now when we compare those examples from the jelly beans and, and how we would count those out, what does it have to do with the measure phase being so often neglected? Well. I believe that in order to validate the data and remember to ensure that we're collecting reliable information, the measure phase may require some additional time, but it's time that we're not necessarily too patient or willing to, to invest that extra time. Very often in our organizations, we're focused on getting a fast answer without realizing that we could be compromised in the accuracy or the quality of the answer that we're giving. So we might ask ourselves, do we regard time, that is the speed of getting to a resolution, as a higher priority than accuracy, that is ensuring that we're getting to the right solution? And so how can we appropriately balance speed versus accuracy in the jelly bean example? And what if the analysis for testing health risks was for new medicines or, or for testing safety in new cars? In those high-risk examples, we might be willing to invest more time in order to mitigate that risk because the reward is much greater. In other circumstances, maybe it is worth 
uh, spending a lot less time and compromising some of the quality of the answer, or the accuracy of the answer. So it really doesn't come down to everything automatically being faster because we can get a faster answer, but we need to consider the risks and consider the rewards that are involved. So remember, what we're not trying to do is eliminate risk, but we want to balance the risk with the rewards. Now, the pre-assessment that we talked about in the define phase can help us predict what the potential benefits are, that is, the potential rewards that we might get. So we might consider it this way. If the benefits are low, if we see that there are low rewards, then that probably means the risk is probably low. Therefore, if it is, then the speed of analysis may be more important. That is, we might be willing to spend a lot less time and compromise the quality or actually the answer because the reward is a lot lower. Otherwise, if we find the benefits are very high, then the risk is probably very high. And in that circumstance, the accuracy of the analysis may be much more important. So we might consider instead using a method that ensures that we have better accuracy. Whatever method we use, we need to always ensure that we're validating the risks with the rewards with our sponsor to make sure that they are in complete agreement with us. And that will help us in ensuring that we're planning the timeline for how we're going to approach the analysis. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. I'd like you to think of three prior situations where you worked and had to do some sort of data analysis. And for each of the situations, try to ask yourself some of these questions. First of all, when the situation began, which was more important, getting quick results or getting accurate results? And who was it that determined that level of importance? If it wasn't you that determined that level of importance, then do you agree with the level of importance that was determined? And how much time was spent actually collecting the data and validating it before you actually began analyzing the data? And then after you began to analyze the data, did you find that any of it was wrong or incomplete? If so, then how much extra time was spent recollecting and revalidating that data? And how much time could have been saved if you had more thoroughly collected and validated the data the first time through? After the situation was complete, then did the priorities change between quick and accurate results? If so, then why do you think it changed? And did the priority really change, or was the risk neither fully understood nor fully communicated from the very beginning? And what would you do differently next time if you suspect the priority between quick and accurate results may change? Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.